Hi everybody, my name is Miss Heaney and today we're going to be talking about the culture of Colonial Virginia, also known as our new neighbors unit. Here's some important information to remember. Whenever people settle an area, they change the culture and landscape to reflect their beliefs, customs, and architecture. We're going to go ahead and break this statement down and talk a little bit about what some of these difficult words mean. The first word we're going to pull apart is what culture means. It says whenever they settle an area, they change their culture. Culture is things like behavior, arts, music, and clothing. So culture is what makes different people unique. Um, some cultures have different um, music that shows their culture, um, like rhythm, lyrics, different instruments. You can tell a lot about a person's culture by their clothing. Um, some people have really bright clothing. Some people have more muted colors. So a lot of people have very different and unique cultures. And we can tell the cultures through things like how they act, arts, music, and clothing. Behavior with culture is very important to note. Um, in some cultures, it's rude to look people in the eye. In some cultures, like in America, if uh, someone is talking to you, it's important to look them in their eye. In some cultures, some people may bow before talking to someone. In some cultures, it's rude to shake hands or to touch people. So just understanding and appreciating other people's culture. What is a landscape? A landscape is how something looks. So a landscape is kind of like when you look outside, the landscape can be um, the ground or landscape can also be like how towns and cities look. So, so far we have whenever people settle an area, they change their culture, which we talked about in the, their landscape. So they change how they behave, their arts, their music, and how, like their homes look to reflect their belief, customs, and architecture. Let's talk about what beliefs, customs, and architecture means. Beliefs are what you believe in. So some people practice religion or so, and some people choose not to practice religion. If you choose to practice in a, a religion or a spirituality or philosophy, you have different beliefs about the world or how it works or just different spiritual ideas. Customs is um, one that we kind of talked about when we talked about culture. It's the things that you do in your culture or community. So those behaviors has a lot to play in part with customs. So for example, in some cultures, their custom is to take their shoes off in a home. Um, in some Asian cultures, it's extremely rude to wear your shoes into a home. So they have a special room for you to take your shoes off in. Bowing before talking to someone is also very popular in other cultures. It shows respect to someone. And I said this before when we talked about culture, looking someone in the eye. A lot of times in different cultures, looking someone in the eye can be seen as rude, like you're challenging that person. However, in America, it's seen as polite to look someone in the eyes. So remember that customs are the things that you do in your culture or community, and that plays a big part in the word culture that we talked about earlier. So they change these things, their culture and landscape, to reflect their customs, the things that they do. The last word we're going to break down is architecture. Architecture means buildings. So you can tell a lot about a culture by looking at their architecture or how their homes are built. For example, homes that are built out in Arizona, their architecture is way different because their weather is different than here in Virginia. If I were to build a home like in Arizona where there's not much rain, the homes would look very different. Some examples of home um, architecture that we're going to talk about is barns, homes, and churches. Barns are like where animals live or where you would keep your tools and supplies for farming. Homes are where people live. It can be like an apartment, a townhome, a standalone home, single family home, condo. And then churches are places of worship. So it's not just churches. It could be um, like synagogues. It can be um, 
monasteries, different places of worship. It's just slipping my mind right now. There's a lot of different places than just what they call churches. So here's a map that we need to know. Um, there's a lot of words on here, so let's go ahead and break this down. Right now I'm looking in the coastal plain Tidewater region, which is written in red here. The Africans and the English were settling in the coastal plain Tidewater region, and they were also settling here in the green in the Piedmont. So Africans were in the Piedmont and coastal plain. The English settled primarily in the Piedmont and the coastal plain. Remember the Blue Ridge Mountains, not a lot of people were settling here. Um, the terrain was very difficult to work in. Um, the Scots-Irish and the Germans were living in the Valley and Ridge region. Um, you're going to be seeing it phrased as the Shenandoah Valley. Remember the Valley and Ridge has the Great Valley of Virginia, so the Germans and Scots-Irish were living here. One thing to note is that natives were living all throughout Virginia at this time, um, there were lots of different populations that were moving in. They were being pushed to other places. So the natives were living all throughout Virginia. Let's talk about the Native Americans. There's different words that we use because of the Native American culture. Roanoke is a town and that name reflects the culture of the Native Americans. So does the word moccasins. Here we have a picture of moccasins and I know I myself wear um, a modern day pair of moccasins. Moccasins and the word reflects their culture and it's a shoe that people wear. One thing you need to know, like I just said, is they lived all throughout Virginia and most were forced inland as other people and populations were moving in. The Germans is another culture. Remember the Germans were living in the Shenandoah Valley. One thing that reflected their culture was two-story barns and homes made of stone. So here we have a two-story barn and it's made out of stone. This type of architecture or building was reflecting the culture of the Germans. The other culture is Scots-Irish. Scots-Irish stands for Scottish and Irish. These were two different cultures that lived close together, so they kind of lumped them together into the phrase Scots-Irish. They also lived in the Shenandoah Valley, which is in the Valley and Ridge region. One thing that reflects the culture of the Scots-Irish is clog dancing. Clog dancing is a type of dancing where they would wear the shoes pictured here and then do their dance. Country and folk music also comes from the Scots-Irish. So if you enjoy country music, um, music played with banjos, um, that kind of folk music. Um, that was actually coming from the Scots-Irish that were living in the Shenandoah Valley. Without them migrating into this region, I don't know if we would ever have country music here. The Africans, remember, they came into Virginia in 1619 against their will. One thing that the Africans brought with them is peanuts, which are shown here. Um, these are legumes that are grown in loose soil, and they took very well um, in the coastal plain region. Peanuts grow really well there because of that loose soil. Remember that the Africans provided labor, again, against their will. However, it did help expand the tobacco economy. The Africans were living primarily in the coastal plain Tidewater region and the Piedmont on plantations. The last group is the English. There's no fun picture to represent the English. Strasbourg and Richmond are two cities and towns that reflect the culture of the English. They're names that reflect the language that they spoke. Remember that the English were primarily living in the coastal plain Tidewater region and the Piedmont. Remember that they came to Jamestown in 1607 and because of diseases they started dispersing and spreading outward and eventually ended up in the Piedmont region in this period of time that we're talking about. And here again is the map of all these different cultures, the Africans living in the Piedmont and coastal plain, the English Piedmont coastal plain, the Germans and Scots-Irish in the Shenandoah Valley, and the natives were living all throughout Virginia. I hope that this PowerPoint helped you understand a little bit more about the culture of colonial Virginia. Thanks for watching. Bye.